The astronaut accidentally landed the spaceship at the Lincoln Memorial. To his horror, he discovered something that would terrify all humans. The once majestic and dignified statue of Lincoln had turned into a monkey. As the astronaut was still reeling from the shock, he noticed a chilling inscription behind the statue. The astronaut was even more stunned. At that moment, police cars suddenly surrounded him. Before he could grasp the situation, a group of eight police officers emerged from the cars. A bold thought suddenly came to the astronaut's mind. Could it be that the rulers of this world are apes? It turned out that in the future, due to the population explosion, the Earth could no longer sustain life. To find the next habitable planet for humans, NASA began genetic modification, and the selected animals were apes. Because they have strong learning and imitation abilities and have learned to use tools during evolution, with systematic training, they could achieve great results. After a strict selection process, the apes were brought to the space station to learn how to pilot spaceships. Leo. The astronaut had an ape named Burley, the most advanced and intelligent of all the genetically modified apes. Leo had high expectations for himself and demanded the same from his ape. Training day after day. One day, the mothership received an abnormal magnetic storm signal to avoid casualties. It was standard procedure to send the apes to scout first. Once safety was confirmed, the mothership would send astronauts. After equipping Burley, Leo gave him some final instructions. These missions were always completed successfully. But unexpectedly, as Burley left the mothership to check the magnetic storm center, the crew noticed something was wrong. The spaceship was veering off its planned course, and within moments, all signals were lost. Leo was very worried about Burley's safety. Against everyone's objections, he quickly geared up and boarded the spaceship, heading to the magnetic storm center to investigate. Soon after leaving the mothership, Leo's spaceship jolted. He then spotted Burley's spaceship. As he reported the situation to the mothership, he noticed a purple glowing electromagnetic sphere rapidly approaching Burley's ship. In the blink of an eye, the spaceship vanished. Before Leo could react, his own ship was also disrupted by the electromagnetic interference, and all instruments suddenly malfunctioned. At the same time, the mothership lost the signal from Leo's spaceship but received a distress video from an unknown source. Meanwhile, Leo and his spaceship drifted in space when a purple glowing electromagnetic sphere suddenly approached them, like the one that hit the probe earlier. It glowed with an eerie purple light. After the purple light passed, the ship's instruments returned to normal. But then Leo noticed something strange. The time on the instrument panel was rapidly advancing, with thousands of years passing in just seconds. Leo could hardly believe his eyes. After realizing what had happened, he quickly adjusted the course to return to the mothership. But a powerful force pushed the spaceship towards another destination. After a violent turbulence, the spaceship arrived at an unknown planet. Due to the massive impact, the spaceship was completely disabled, eventually crashing in a forest. Fortunately, Leo survived. He quickly surfaced and reached the shore. Observing the surroundings, there were dense vegetation, essential water resources, abundant oxygen in the air, and suitable temperature and humidity an ideal place for survival. If not for the crash, Leo couldn't have imagined discovering this place. But the more enchanting the place, the more dangerous it could be. As Leo was still rejoicing in his survival, he suddenly spotted an old man and a girl named Dina. He wanted to ask something but wasn't given the chance. The other party sped up and fled. More humans followed, all running as if something more dangerous was chasing them. Leo was confused and instinctively joined the crowd, but the creatures chasing them were faster. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be armored apes. They moved nimbly, using both hands and feet, capturing humans like prey and stuffing them into sacks. Leo could hardly believe his eyes. He didn't know when apes had evolved to this state. The number of fleeing humans dwindled, and by the time they escaped the forest, they found themselves surrounded by an ape army. No matter what they did, they couldn't escape being captured. Although Leo was an exceptional pilot, he was also pinned down by an ape. The ape, clearly irritable, noticed the humans staring at it and spoke in a dangerous tone. Your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Leo and the other captured humans were put into modified cages. The modification was that the cages were not pulled by horses but by humans. While Leo had accepted that apes could speak and humans had become slaves, the sight of the castle shocked him once more. The apes here not only played musical instruments but also cut hair and styled it fashionably, creating a miniature society. Leo wanted to ask the others in the cage where they were, but everyone had the same look of unfamiliarity and bewilderment on their faces. From the moment they entered the castle, 
Leo kept hearing the phrase dirty humans and was occasionally attacked by young apes. Recalling the day's events, he deduced that humans were at the bottom of the social hierarchy here. Sure enough, after stopping, an ape who looked like a merchant appeared. Humans were displayed like merchandise for apes to buy. And during the selection process, Limbo kept spewing insults. Then, at the merchant ape's command, all humans were driven out of the cages and began to be sorted by quality. At this point, General Fade suddenly appeared, instructing the merchant to pay special attention to Leo, because he was different from other humans. From their conversation, Leo learned that today's roundup was because humans had trespassed into an orchard looking for food. The merchant suggested making an example of them, but General Fade thought using humans as slaves would be a more fitting punishment. As he left, General Fade chose a human girl as a gift for his niece. The merchant, trying to please, also presented a collar. However, not all apes were like this. During the branding process, the painful screams echoed continuously. A female ape named Ari, unable to bear it any longer, stepped in to stop it. Ari's father was a senator. In Ari's view, humans and apes should coexist peacefully. She had previously intervened when Leo and the others were pelted with stones. From the way the aggressive apes talked, it was clear that this wasn't the first time Ari had stood up for humans. Though Leo had only briefly met her, he could tell at a glance that Ari was different from other apes. To escape, he sought Ari's help. Ari had already planned to do so. She bought Leo and Dina from the merchant and brought them home as servants. Ari's home had several humans. Upon arrival, Leo was forced to learn the rules. When the master returns home, they must stand up and cannot make eye contact. Ari's father saw Leo and Dina, expressing some displeasure in his tone, because there would be guests tonight. Ari felt that Leo was different, as they were considered wildlings. Leo and Dina were not allowed in the main hall. When only the two of them were in the kitchen, Leo secretly hid a knife and complained to Dina. Leo wanted to leave but didn't want the butler ape to see him. Tonight's banquet was important, but there weren't enough hands, so the butler brought Leo to the main hall. Soon, another guest arrived. None other than the ape general, General Thade, whom they had seen during the day. He liked Ari, but it was more about power. However, their differing views on humans meant they could never be a family. General Thade's greatest wish was to eliminate all humans. His arrival shifted the banquet's topic to humans. At Ari's suggestion, her father felt that General Thade's actions were somewhat extreme. However, General Thade believed that using extreme measures to protect apes was not wrong. Otherwise, as the human population grew, their situation would become unfavorable. Ari brought out a handmade item saying humans were actually very intelligent and capable of creating civilizations. Peaceful coexistence was the best solution. Hearing these words made General Thade increasingly angry, eager to vent his frustration. At this moment, Leo followed the butler to serve the food. As he passed by General Thade, he was suddenly pulled down. Before he could react, his mouth was roughly pried open, becoming a tool for General Thade's anger. The good banquet was thus disrupted leaving Ari with no appetite. As soon as she left, General Thade followed her, seizing the opportunity to express his love. Meanwhile, after the banquet, Leo was locked in a cell. Once the butler left, he pulled out the hidden knife and picked the lock, finding it pointless to escape alone. Leo decided to free all the humans in the cell. Dina suggested returning to the forest. During their escape, Leo discovered that apes also had a vibrant nightlife. Singing and bathing, everything was going smoothly. But when rescuing the little girl, they were discovered by an awake ape. The scream alerted the patrolling soldiers. While hiding, Leo encountered Ari again. Instead of being angry about their escape, Ari decided to help them. But as they entered the tunnel, they were spotted by General Thade's men. To cover the other's escape, the injured old man grabbed a spear and charged. But facing an ape nearly two meters tall, the old man was restrained and couldn't move. At that moment, General Thade appeared behind them and killed the old man. General Thade decided to leave no survivors among the fleeing humans, but upon hearing that Ari was involved, he immediately changed his tone, believing that the humans must be dangerous and Ari had no other choice. Meanwhile, with Ari leading them, Leo and the others successfully escaped the castle and reached the lake where the spaceship had crashed. Even then, Leo still couldn't believe why the apes could talk. Ari's attendant was furious upon hearing this, jumping up and warning Leo to watch his words. To prove his point, Leo went to the lake, intending to jump in. But this action frightened Ari because apes were afraid of water, couldn't swim, and would drown. Leo, however, 
was not afraid. He swam to the bottom of the lake in one breath and retrieved a tool kit from the damaged spaceship. Inside were communication devices for contacting the mothership in case of emergency and a handgun. Leo opened the scanner, and in the next second, his face lit up with joy. The locator showed that the mothership was also on this planet and very close by. Determined to return to Earth, he decided to go there immediately. On the way, they encountered Limbo, the slaver they had met before. Seeing a little boy about to be captured, Leo fired a shot, causing sparks and lightning. The apes, having never seen such a thing, fled in panic. Seeing this, the merchant knelt and begged for mercy, professing his support for human ape coexistence. However, he secretly tried to grab a weapon with his foot. Leo noticed his subtle movement and fired another shot as a warning, to prevent him from reporting back. Leo had him handcuffed, intending to release him after finding the mothership. Meanwhile, General Thade, using Ari's rescue as a pretext, approached the senator, attempting to persuade him to declare martial law and grant him absolute authority to deploy the army and eliminate all humans. General Thade's ambition and lust for power were evident on his face. The senator knew agreeing would have severe consequences, but he had no choice to save his daughter. Seeing his goal finally achieved, General Thade was eager to kill Leo in celebration. However, just then, a servant appeared, informing him that his father wanted to see him. The elder ape, sensing his end was near, called General Thade to his bedside. Though he hadn't left his bed in a long time, he had heard about recent events. He knew his son was troubled by the situation with Leo, so he gestured for him to break a jar on the table. To his surprise, an old-fashioned gun was hidden inside. As he wondered what it was, his father suddenly fired it with a stern expression, revealing a top-secret truth in ancient times. Humans were the rulers of this planet, and apes were the slaves kept in cages. He warned that humans must never enter the Forbidden Zone, the place of their ancestors' origins. Overcome with emotion, his father passed away. On the other side, Leo led the group to the location indicated by the locator, arriving at a strange place. Unlike the dense rainforest they had seen before, this area was desolate, with scarecrow-like figures standing around. Ari explained that these were meant to prevent further progress. As this was the way to the Forbidden Zone, Leo's mind was even more confused by this explanation. Ignoring the warnings about the Forbidden Zone, he insisted on moving forward, as the locator indicated that the mothership was ahead. However, reaching the destination wouldn't be easy. The Forbidden Zone was heavily guarded by ape soldiers. Seeing the river next to the camp, Leo recalled the drowned ape corpses he had seen at the bottom of the lake and devised a plan. At that moment, General Thade's men arrived ordering all soldiers to be ready for battle and to execute any humans on sight. Shortly after nightfall, Leo led the group into the camp under the cover of darkness. After everyone mounted their horses, Leo fired a signal flare, hoping to alert his companions. However, the companions hadn't seen it when General Thade's men discovered them. Fortunately, Leo had never planned a quiet escape. After setting fire to a few tents, he successfully crossed the river with the water-fearing Ari. Upon learning that the apes had failed to capture Leo, that he had been intimate with Ari, and, most importantly, that he had entered the Forbidden Zone, General Thade was furious. He immediately ordered the troops to be mobilized, vowing to personally capture Leo and reclaim what was rightfully his. After a night's rest, Leo set out with the group once more. Initially, he only intended to save as many people as possible, but now, with everyone choosing to accompany him, he couldn't abandon them. He hoped to find a solution after returning to the mothership. Following the guidance of the scanning locator, the group finally arrived at the location of the mothership. To Leo's shock, the mothership had become a wreck. He couldn't believe it until he saw the familiar warning signs on the walls and realized that the skull buried in the sand belonged to one of his former crewmates. Judging by the state of the surroundings, the mothership had been corroding for at least a thousand years. Leo had many questions. Why did the spaceship crash here? Why had so much changed when he had only been gone for a few days? Why did humans and apes fail to coexist peacefully? These questions kept surfacing in his mind, and Leo wished it was all just a bad dream. Using fingerprint recognition, he opened the cockpit door. Despite the exterior damage, all the instruments inside were still functioning normally. Eagerly, Leo accessed the database to find out what had happened after he left. The first thing he saw was the distress video the cockpit had received. Then came some logs mixed with the sounds of apes screeching. Piecing together all the information, Leo reconstructed a horrifying past. It turned out that after his incident, the mothership entered the electromagnetic storm to search for him, though they were on the same planet. There was a crucial difference. Leo's time was thousands of years in the future, 
So, the mothership couldn't find Leo. And what Leo found was only the remains. Being in an unfamiliar environment wasn't the worst part. The most shocking thing for Leo's crewmates was that the apes that came along grew increasingly intelligent. Apes already had high intelligence, and with genetic modification and training, they gradually developed self-awareness. Eventually, an ape named Simoz became their leader, they defeated the humans and became the rulers of the planet. General Thade was a direct descendant of Simoz, while the surviving humans became fugitives, considered the lowest beings by the apes. Learning the truth, Leo felt more shock and self-blame, he had left the mothership to rescue his ape partner, Burley, who had lost contact in the electromagnetic storm. Little did he know that this decision would lead to the sacrifice of all his crewmates and the current situation. Leo felt like a sinner, however, as he exited the mothership, he noticed that a large group of humans had gathered around, coming from all directions and slowly approaching the mothership. The news of Leo's defiance against the apes had spread, and everyone wanted to see the person with such courage. Such a large gathering was bound to attract the attention of the ape army. If they were captured, it would be effortless for the apes. Leo wanted to persuade them to leave, but the humans, oppressed for thousands of years, were eager for a leader to start the fight against the apes. They chose Leo as their leader, faced with this request. Leo didn't immediately agree, having just learned that he had caused his crewmates' deaths. He wasn't in the mood to participate in any grand schemes. Night quickly fell, and humans gathered in small groups around the campfire. At this time, a boy on watch spotted tens of thousands of ape soldiers marching towards the mothership. Upon hearing this, Leo planned to evacuate the humans, urging them to flee into the mountains. No matter how hard Leo tried to persuade them, the humans stood their ground, unmoving. Ari, not wanting the humans to die in vain or for Leo to face a difficult decision, sought out General Thade that night to try to persuade him to withdraw the troops and coexist peacefully with humans. However, Ari never expected that the general, who had once promised never to change his feelings for her, would completely change his attitude after gaining the power he desired. On the other side, Leo was extremely conflicted. He wanted to protect the humans, but this battle was doomed to fail. They had no weapons, no reinforcements, and not even the qualification to engage. At this time, Ari was also sent back, seeing the brand on her hand. Leo felt a mix of emotions, thinking that perhaps he shouldn't have involved her from the beginning, while Ari went to tend to her wound. Leo discovered that the mothership still had a significant amount of fuel. An audacious idea formed in his mind, and he immediately started preparing for a battle against the ape army. Early the next morning, General Thade led his army, marching grandly towards the mothership. At this point, they still didn't know that the so-called Forbidden Zone was actually a spaceship. As the battle was about to break out, Leo quickly arranged for the elderly, women, and children to hide behind the spaceship, while he led a few people to the front as bait. At General Thade's command, the ape army launched the first wave of attacks. Seeing the opportunity, Leo ordered the decoys to retreat. As the attacking apes approached the spaceship, Leo pressed the remote control button. The powerful shockwave knocked the apes to the ground, and flames quickly enveloped them. However, this tactic could only be used once. Besides, the apes would not fall for it again, and the remaining fuel in the spaceship was completely depleted after this. Following Leo's orders, the humans rushed out to grab equipment and finish off the surviving apes. General Thade watched from a distance, his eyes filled with rage. Overwhelmed by the heat of battle, he roared and ordered all his soldiers to attack. Humans and apes clashed, the scene descending into chaos, but more than a battle between two races, this was a personal vendetta incited by General Thade. As both sides fought fiercely, General Thade targeted Leo. Though Leo had once been an excellent pilot, he was slightly inferior in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Just as General Thade knocked him to the ground and was about to deliver the final blow, a loud noise suddenly came from the sky. A white light slowly approached, and both humans and apes paused to watch this miraculous scene. As the white light vanished, a spaceship gently landed. When the hatch opened, everyone was shocked to see that the pilot was a small ape Leo's partner, Burley. While the humans stood in awe, the ape army suddenly knelt, chanting the name of Simoz, their ancestor. There had always been a prophecy that the god Simoz would return, and seeing his old partner, Leo was overjoyed. Back at the space station, he and Burley had worked well together. Now, he didn't hold back his praise. In the presence of both humans and apes, Leo brought Burley down from the spaceship. Their hand-in-hand -hand gesture calmed the tensions between the two sides. However, as Leo opened the toolkit to prove his identity, 
Burley suddenly ran back into the spaceship. Leo tried to follow but was tackled by General Thade. The struggle continued inside the spaceship, with Burley attempting to intervene but being thrown aside. Leo pulled out his gun and started shooting at General Thade, but the Agile Ape dodged all the bullets. The gun was knocked into the cockpit. Remembering his father's words about the power of the gun, General Thade quickly grabbed it. After only one attempt, he figured out how to use it. Seeing the gun aimed at him, Leo quickly placed his hand on the sensor. The cockpit's glass shield blocked the bullets. General Thade frantically fired, but the glass remained intact, leaving him panicking inside. Seeing his subordinates outside, General Thade thought they would help him. However, over the years, his short temper and unpredictable outbursts had alienated his subordinates. Leo believed that being trapped inside the spaceship was the most fitting punishment for General Thade. So, he calmly exited the spaceship, handed Burley over to Ari for care, and prepared to leave. He planned to re-enter the electromagnetic storm and attempt to return to the blue planet. Ari tried to persuade Leo to stay, but he was determined to leave. After experiencing all this, humans and apes would coexist peacefully, but he knew he didn't belong here. Leo eagerly started the spaceship. As he passed through the electromagnetic storm, the spaceship was once again disturbed, shaking violently. But soon, after the purple light disappeared, he saw Earth. As he re-entered the atmosphere, the spaceship lost control, crashing to the ground. When Leo emerged from the spaceship, he found himself at the entrance of the Lincoln Memorial. In just a few days, he felt a sense of estrangement from Earth. Even more shocking was that the statue in the memorial was of General Thade. The inscription behind it read, This temple is dedicated to the great ape General Thade, who saved this planet. As Leo stood in shock, police sirens wailed. The arriving officers, onlookers, and photographers were all apes. Could it be that Leo didn't return to Earth? Or was he transported to another timeline because of the electromagnetic storm? I'm a movie enthusiast. Please subscribe to my channel. See you next time.